Today I'm going to show you how to knit a large size tote bag using a circular knitting machine. A couple of weeks ago I released a tutorial on how to knit a small size tote bag and the response has been wild. Every day I log on to Instagram and I see dozens of gorgeous tote bags being knit around the world using the pattern. And since then I've gotten so many messages from viewers asking me to design a larger size of the tote bag. And so today I'm thrilled to share with you a full tutorial of the large size tote bag. I'm going to share every step of the process here, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase a printable download of both patterns in my Etsy shop linked below. In terms of sizing, this is a big bag. The tote measures approximately 19 inches wide by about 22 inches tall including the handle, and even longer when it's worn. The bottom area measures about 10 inches tall. I took my bag out for a spin today and I easily fit a couple of books, my wallet, and all the other contents from my regular purse. It can be worn as a shoulder bag or as a crossbody bag. I'm also working on a medium size and an extra small size of the tote bag, so stay tuned for those videos. There's so many ways you can customize this tote. You can play with adding a different handle, changing the length of the handle, or you can even skip the handle altogether. And if you sew, you could also consider lining the bag with fabric. If you use this pattern, please tag me on social media when you share your work. At Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. In terms of timing, I'm not going to lie to you and say this was a quick and easy knitting pattern. It is fairly easy, but I wouldn't call it quick. It took me about an hour to knit each panel for a total of two hours of knitting. It took me another couple of hours to seam the pieces and assemble the bag, and another half an hour or so to knit and attach the handle. So I would estimate that it took me about six hours from beginning to end. I have lots more fun patterns and tutorials coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my latest patterns and videos. If you'd like to check out any of my knitting machine templates, books, and patterns, visit dianalevinenits.com. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For today's project, I'm using a 46 needle Addy knitting machine, and I'll also give some tips on adapting this for the 48 needle Centro. I'll be using a 22 needle Addy knitting machine to knit the handle, but this machine is optional if you prefer to crochet or braid the handle. I'm knitting with loops and threads impeccable yarn in the color pumpkin, and I used about two and a half skeins of this yarn to complete the project. I'll also be using a crochet hook, a darning needle, a pair of scissors, stitch markers, and a knitting tag. For this project, you'll need to knit two tubes of the same length. I already knit my first tube, and I'll be knitting my second tube now. To begin, roll your machine to the first needle. Using a scrap yarn, wrap your yarn around the first needle, and then weave the yarn back and forth along all the needles until the end of the row. When you reach the end, place your yarn into the tensioner. If you're using an Addy machine, hold the yarn in your hand to provide tension and begin to knit. Knit at least five rows in the scrap yarn. The color of the scrap yarn doesn't matter because you'll be removing the yarn at the end of the project, but make sure it contrasts well with the main color, which will make it easier to seam at the end. When you're ready to switch to your main color, leave a really, really long tail in the main color and place it in the middle of the machine, directly next to the scrap yarn tail. Hold them close together and low as you begin to knit. Go slowly at first, and then you can pick up speed after a few rows. It's important that you leave an extra long tail for this project because we're going to use the tail to seam the pieces together and then to assemble the bag. For my tote bags, I'm knitting 218 rows for each tube. If you're using a Centro 48 needle machine, I would suggest knitting around 220 rows. That being said, the important part of this pattern is to match the dimensions of the final piece, not necessarily the row count. When using a knitting machine, tension can vary from person to person. For some patterns, the difference in tension doesn't make that much of a difference in the end result. But for a pattern like this, it's important that your dimensions be the same as I'm showing in the tutorial. So when you're making the project, use however many rows it takes to match the dimensions that I'll be showing you later in the video after we seam the pieces. But if your tension and machine is similar to mine, 218 rows should work well. For this project, it's really, really important that you knit exactly the same number of rows for each tube. When I knit the project, I actually used a hand counter in addition to the counter on my machine, which gives me some peace of mind as I'm working to know that I have an accurate row count. If your tubes are off by one or two rows, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but if they're off by much more than that, they'll end up not matching up properly. When your work starts to touch the table, gently bring the work up inside the machine. As you knit and the tube becomes longer, continue to roll the work inside. If you run out of yarn while knitting the tube, switch to the next skein in the same way that we switched to the main color in the beginning, by placing the yarn tails together in the middle of the machine and holding them close and low as you begin to knit with the next skein. 
When you finish knitting your main piece, cut another very, very long tail in the main collar and throw it into the middle of the machine. Then you can leave a much shorter tail in the scrap yarn and knit at least five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish, cut a tail in the scrap yarn and crank the machine until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work off the machine and unroll and stretch out the work. You'll now have two long tubes of knitting. Your yarn tails should be very long. If it helps, you can roll up the yarn tails in a little ball and secure them with a stitch marker to keep things neat while you work. The first step is to seam the edges of the tubes. If you need a closer look on how to seam the side of a knitting machine tube, I'll link to a video that shows the technique in detail. Flatten your work with the yarn tails to the left side and identify the top line of main color loops, which will be seaming. Bring your crochet hook through the loop furthest to the right and then pull through the next loop on the top side. Next, pull through the loop on the bottom side. Continue in this pattern, alternating between top and bottom loops until the end of the row. When you finish the row, pull the long yarn tail through the last loop and secure with a knot. Here's how your seam will look now. Next, we need to remove the scrap yarn. If your scrap yarn isn't easy to pull off, identify the yarn going through the top layer of loops and use a crochet hook or your fingers to pull through that one yarn. Once you remove that length, the rest of the scrap yarn will pull off much more easily. Our first seam is complete. Next, turn the work around and repeat the same process on the other side. Then, seam both sides of the other tube. We now have two long seamed tubes of knitting. Next, we'll be seaming the two tubes together using the mattress stitch. Begin by identifying the two lines of knitting you'll be seaming together and attach them temporarily using stitch markers. When I knit the mattress stitch, I identify two lines of V-shaped stitches going in the same direction on either side and then I work the stitch through the bars directly next to the V-shaped stitches. Those are the stitches I'm adding my stitch markers to. When you're ready to seam, thread one of the long yarn tails onto a darning needle. Start by going through the very top stitch on the other side to join the work. Then thread your needle under the two bars directly next to the V-shaped stitch on the bottom side of the work. I'll show you a close-up of the two stitches I'm threading through here. Pull your yarn through and then thread the needle under the two bars next to the V-shaped stitch on the other side, which I'll show you closer up here. Continue in this pattern, threading through two bars on the top, then two bars on the bottom, until the end of the row. You can also go one bar at a time if you have the patience for it, but this project requires a lot of seaming, so going two rows at a time will help speed up the process a bit. As you're working, it's important to make sure that you're picking up stitches along the exact same row from beginning to end. If you accidentally pick up stitches in the next row over, it won't have the seamless look of the mattress stitch. Continue to double check that you're working through the same line of stitches. Pulling the work together in advance using the stitch markers will help with this a lot. Remove the stitch markers as you get close to them and continue until the end of the work. Okay, I just finished using the mattress stitch to seam my two tubes together. The width of the two tubes together is 41 inches long. The height is approximately 13 inches tall. As I mentioned earlier, the goal is to match these dimensions. If you need to knit more or less rows than I did because your tension is different, just make sure that your work matches the dimensions here. If you're using the 48 needle Centro knitting machine, your seamed tubes will likely be a touch taller, which will make the final piece a touch larger. So you'll just want to make sure the length is a touch wider to match. Next, we'll assemble the bags. The first step is to fold the right corner down, then fold the left corner up. Next, fold the right side up to the left to create a square shape with two triangles on top. This will be the basic shape of our tote bag. Next, we'll seam the bag together using the mattress stitch just like we did earlier. Identify the two lines of V-shaped stitches going in the same direction that you'll be bringing together. Use stitch markers to bring together the stitches directly to the sides of the lines of stitches you'll be bringing together. Thread your long yarn tail onto a darning needle and thread it through the edge to the middle of the work. Secure the yarn tail with a knot on the inside of the bag before you begin. Next, go through one of the stitches on the other side to join the work. Then work in the same process as earlier, threading the needle through two bars in the top followed by two bars on the bottom until the end of the row. I'll show you a close up here of the bars I'm working through on the bottom side and the bars I'm working through on the top side here. Just like earlier, it's really important to keep an eye on making sure you're working through the same line of stitches all the way from beginning to end. Continue along removing the stitch markers as you get close to them until the end of the row. When you reach the end, make sure to capture the last couple of stitches so there aren't any holes in the corners of your bag and thread the needle to the inside corner of the bag. At this point, we won't be using that yarn tail anymore, so you can secure the yarn with a few knots and then weave the ends into the center area of the bag and trim the tail. I just finished seaming one side of my tote bag. Now I'll flip the work over and I'll seam the other side.
Again, thread a yarn tail from the middle of the work through the top to the middle of the bag and secure the yarn with a knot on the inside of the bag. Then repeat the exact same process as earlier using the mattress stitch to seam the two sides together and when you finish, thread the yarn into the inside corner of the work, secure with a few good knots and weave in and trim the ends. Our tote bag is starting to come together. Next, I'm gonna add a knitting tag to my bag. You can add a tag wherever you prefer, or you can skip it all together, but I'll be adding mine to the center area of the bag. Next, we need to knit the handle. Or alternatively, if you prefer a much shorter handle, you could seam the top corners of the bag directly to each other and skip the next step. It might not sit quite as nicely when you lay it flat to take a photo, but it would still function well as a tote. There are so many ways to knit the handle for this bag, but I'll show you one way here, and I look forward to seeing all the different ways people innovate this part of the bag, with crocheted handles, braided handles, and more. I'm using a 22 needle circular knitting machine and casting on with a scrap yarn in the same process as we did earlier. Knit at least five rows in the scrap yarn. Then leave a medium sized tail and switch to the main color. For a long handle, knit 100 rows in the main color. Keep in mind that when you add items to the bag, it'll stretch out a bit. So if you prefer the bag to sit a little closer to your body when you're wearing it, I would go with a shorter handle, maybe around 50 rows. For mine, I wanted to be able to use it as both a shoulder bag and a crossbody bag, so I'm knitting a longer handle. When you finish the main color, switch back to the scrap yarn and knit five rows. Then cut the scrap yarn and crank the machine until the work falls off the needles. Next, seam the sides of the tube using a crochet hook in the exact same way that we seamed the main pieces. We now have both pieces of our bag knit and seamed. Next, we need to attach the handle to the bag. The sides of the bag are corners, so we'll be seaming half of the handle edge to the right side of the corner and half of the handle edge to the left side of the corner. Use a couple of stitch markers to keep the work in place. Thread one of the yarn tails onto a darning needle and begin by sewing one stitch through to secure the work. Then switch to the mattress stitch, picking up one stitch at a time from the edge of each seam and working back and forth until the end of the row. Then secure the last stitch by going all the way through both stitches and then secure with a knot and weave and trim in the ends. Repeat the same process on the other side of the handle. The last step is to secure the edges of where we attach the handle. This will help keep the handle tightly attached, especially when you add items to the bag. Cut a length of yarn in the main color and use a darning needle to sew through about three to four stitches on either side of where you attach the handle. Then tie a tight knot with the two yarn tails on the inside of the bag. Secure with a couple more knots and then weave in and trim the ends. Repeat the same process on the other handle. Our tote bag is complete. It was a lot of work, but it was so worth it and I love how it turned out. The bag does have some stretch to it as it's a knitted item, especially if you plan to bring around anything heavy like water bottles. But for me, it works perfectly when carrying around paperback books, my wallet, and general purse items. But if you want some more support in the bag, I would suggest playing around with sewing in a fabric liner. You could also try knitting a smaller handle. Alternatively, if you want some quick extra support for the bag, I laminated two sheets of cardstock in the same color as my knitting, trimmed them down, and attached them with packing tape. And then I use that as a quick insert to provide some additional support. However, I would only use this for myself. I personally wouldn't use this if I were selling the item. If you make this project, please tag me at Dinah Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest when you share your project. I can't wait to see what you come up with. If you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase the digital downloads of the pattern, available now in my Etsy shop linked below. If you'd like to check out any of my knitting machine templates, patterns, or workbooks, please visit dianalevinenits.com. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more fun, quick and easy knitting patterns and tutorials.